Don Quixote, or the ingenious Hidalgo Don Quixote of La Mancha in English, sometimes referred to as the ingenious knight Don Quixote of La Mancha. This is a fictional character you might have heard of that was created in a novel, sometimes regarded as the first modern novel, by a man going by the name of Miguel de Cervantes, who is sometimes regarded as the greatest author of Spanish literature to have ever lived. A very, very popular book, novel at the time. It was released in the early 17th century and was a bestseller in that time as well, immediately translated, etc. And in the novel, sometimes referred to as Don Quixote, you have this very interesting situation of a man who has, throughout his life, read copious amounts of chivalric literature and effectively deluded himself into thinking that this is all real. And after having imbibed all of this literature, what does he do? He convinces himself that he is a knight and that his old nag of a horse is, in fact, a majestic steed, a knightly steed, and that it is his duty to ride about Iberia, saving the populace from evil dangers. He convinces himself, for example, that some windmills are, in fact, giants. And when it's pointed out to him that the windmills are, in fact, windmills, he claims that wizardry or sorcery was afoot, and that the giants, in fact, were transformed into windmills. And he does this quite a bit. He gallivants through the landscape of Spain, attempting to right wrongs and what have you, completely deluded to a situation. Eventually, he takes on a squire by the name of Sancho Panza, who also becomes part and parcel to this delusion. Eventually, Don Quixote is defeated in combat by a fellow knight, a purported fellow knight, and the requirement of this is that upon defeat, he's forced to return home, and he renounces the knightly life and promptly dies, probably a disappointed, somewhat bitter old man. Now, why am I talking about Cervantes, and why am I talking about Don Quixote? Well, for one, the term you might be familiar with in English as well as other European languages, quixotic, is derived from the novel, which is to say an individual who is quixotic is somebody who acts in ways that resemble or are similar to a Don Quixote-like figure. Somebody who's hopeful, idealistic, and that's being generous, and often downright deluded. That describes the state of being quixotic. But I bring this up not just to talk about the etymology of the word quixotic, far from it, but indeed to reference the fact that many people, whether correctly or incorrectly, have interpreted the novel by Cervantes, Don Quixote, as a manual of an individual struggle dealing with something I've talked about a number of times throughout the years on my channel, terror management, which is to say terror management theory, this idea that humans uniquely being endowed as we are with our sense, with our awareness of our forthcoming annihilation, engage in all sorts of behaviors to brush that off, to come to terms with it. And the interpretation here of, of Quixote is then that the chivalric delusion that he has undergone is his attempt to deal with his own mortality and his way of brushing that off and brushing that aside. But whether that's true or not, I think there is a kernel of absolute truth beyond any interpretive fact here, and that is that one lesson that we can learn from Don Quixote is the power of delusion. And more importantly, that probably on some very basic level, although your mileage may indeed vary, we all need some level of delusion. Because to get from A to Z, and I'm describing A to Z here in the sense of from the beginning of life to the end, you need something to keep yourself going. Most of the time, as I've said in recent videos, these things are sui generis or generated from the self, auto-generated. And this phenomenon allows people to plod and 
trot on with their lives despite the distinct possibility that what they're engaged in and what they think might be delusional. And the interesting thing about a Don Quixote figure and its analogy to many contemporary human beings living in the current year is that Don Quixote's interest and his delusion to pursue the chivalric life, a fantasy world, was not auto-generated. It was not sui generis. It was something that he picked up. It was an ideology, in fact. He read too many novels of courtly love, chivalry, and romance, and he got into his head that this would be a good way to experience life and to live his life. And so he tries and ultimately fails. But the similarity of that to the many occurrences we can observe in the current year with respect to people find themselves particularly attached to ideologies or ideological talking points and sticking with them for a year or two or a few months only to move on, that rings a bell, doesn't it? It seems quite similar. And the common thread here between what's going on in the real world and the fantasy novel world of Don Quixote is, in fact, that these types of meanings, these types of pursuits, are de facto not auto-generated. They're contrived. The issue is contrivance. So yes, the novel, and for all I know, human existence might just be a giant expression of terror management theory. Entirely possible. But how you engage with this terror management, how you deal with it, that's the real question. And I think Quixote contains within itself as a, as a book, as a novel, a fundamental truth, which is to say contrivance doesn't really work when it comes to meaning because contrivance lacks sustainability. If you find yourself attached to a particular ideology or a mindset that you found convincing for a while and you became really enthusiastic about it, really hyped, chances are you're going to burn out. We've probably all been through phases like this. I went through an Ayn Randian phase between the ages of 17 and 18 approximately. I was obsessed with Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrugged in particular. But it didn't last long. I burned out. I had a libertarian phase for a few years in my 20s. It didn't last long. It burned out. And so these are just small examples, mind you, but Examples of contrivance, you get attached to something for a little bit because you find it compelling, or you think you do, and it fuels your fires for a while. Just like the chivalric ideal and romanticism fuel the fires of one Don Quixote. But the difference between the auto-generated and the contrived sense of meaning and purpose is that most of the time, in the case of the former, these phenomena continue to persist. The person who is obsessed with something because it naturally came from within is much less likely to drop it than the person who might have heard a podcast or read a book and became convinced that X ideological talking point or Y ideology were the be all and end all and should be his raison d'etre henceforth. Sure, there are probably some people that stick with these things, but they're rare and far and few between, I would argue. For the most part, when something's contrived, when it's artificial, when it takes effort to believe in it, when you have to force yourself to convince yourself that you should believe in it and that you should follow the precepts and go through the motions, that's usually when it's not sustainable. What is sustainable? Things that are sustainable are things that come from within. An example of this I could give you is a person I know, an acquaintance, not a friend, an acquaintance I know online who is obsessed, and I do mean obsessed, with an academic subject matter. He's going to get a PhD in it. He's working towards that end. I've asked him questions at times along the lines of what would happen if your fiancé broke it off or all your family died. He would just continue. He would be 
the same person fundamentally. It might bother him a little bit, these things, but he would just continue on the path because it seems that the gods have been generous with him and have endowed him with a unique talent, and he's very talented in the subject matter, I have to say, extremely so, to pursue this. And so nothing can turn him from that path. In fact, he recently confessed to me that his only fear in life is that he could be a wagey not doing the academic subject that he is so obsessed with. And this is a perfect example of something that comes completely from within and not from without. He doesn't care about pretty much anything else except for that. And the beauty of this, and you could criticize him if you wish to for being indifferent to other subjects or other matters or unworldly, but the beauty is this will fuel him for the rest of his life. He doesn't need to go in search of an ideology. He doesn't need to go in search of some reason to persist. Now, this circles back to something I talked about in my most recent video that in so-called black pill communities, you often find a lack of not just auto-generated meaning, but lack of interest in anything. And so most people suffering from the kind of black pill malaise described are people who do not have this internal mechanism and operation. So the question is, is it simply something that is given or is it something that is found? Well, I'll argue that it's a little bit of both. The lesson of Don Quixote is that you do not want to delude yourself into whatever it might be, in this case, chivalric romance as a way of sustaining your existence because it will, guaranteed, at some point in time, fail you. But on the other hand, maybe it's not as glaringly apparent as it is to this individual that I mentioned just now who's obsessed with the subject matter what it is that you can do or want to do as an individual. It might require a bit of searching, but a bit of searching and experimentation is not tantamount to becoming obsessed with particular ideologies or ideological talking points, or worldviews for that matter. It's seeing what jives with you. And though nobody can promise that you will be as obsessed as this individual is, it might be possible that you'll find something somewhat comparable that is internal enough such that it can sustain you for the foreseeable future. Something that basically is your meaning, because that's ultimately what we're talking about. And the lesson to be learned from all of these people who grab onto and fall off ideological bandwagons, and indeed the mythical figure of Don Quixote, is that artificial contrivance never really seems to work. I've seen it again and again and again, and I've seen it fail again and again and again. And so really the only thing we can do is look within, internally, to find something that might nudge us in the right direction. Again, it's not always clear. Most of us are not like this individual I mentioned that has been chosen by the gods to not only excel in his subject, to be obsessed simultaneously. Most of us are not like that. But we might be able to find something, especially if you were young and do enough searching within, experimentation, without, to find something that will be sustainable over a long period of time. Something that generates meaning that might be at least partially contrived, but has enough of that internal goodness to keep you going. Please do leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Share the video. Hit the bell icon to be informed of forthcoming videos because YouTube throttles my channel routinely and repeatedly. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. May the gods watch over you. Bye-bye and enjoy your weekend. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.